So for the next section of my talk, I want to switch gears and discuss how mindfulness might be able to help us improve our sleep quality. And a lot of this work has been pioneered by Dr. Jason Ong from Northwestern University, who came up with the first uh, manualized treatment known as mindfulness-based therapy for insomnia. Uh, Dr. Ong is uh, also a close collaborator of ours on, on a lot of the work that we do. Um, you've already heard from um, Dr. Prakash, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with what mindfulness is. It's really about um, paying attention to what's going on in the present moment and treating those thoughts and experiences that we have with attitudes of acceptance and non-judgment. And what Jason has done is that he's combined some of those practices of mindfulness together with older uh, behavioral strategies from cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia to create this new treatment package. One of the ideas that Jason has for why mindfulness might be so helpful for people with sleep difficulties is that mindfulness has a, an effect on um, improving what's called our metacognition. And this is a fancy psychologist's way of saying thinking about thinking. Um, in other words, as human beings, we all have the unique insight to generate thoughts such as, oh, I, study, I prefer to study in the morning rather than the evening because I retain material better then or um, I should be paying a better attention to this talk now so that I can go home and tell my friends and family about it later on. Um, mindfulness increases metacognition, and that gives us um, a better awareness of the thoughts and experiences that we're having. But not only that, it stops us from playing kind of our automatic reactions to those thoughts and experiences and allows us to be more flexible with how we respond to them, to play a different tape, so to speak. That kind of forms the basis for why my, we think that mindfulness-based therapy for insomnia works, and also how it contrasts with some older behavioral treatments. And I'm going to show you a few of those key differences now, that when we ask people to practice mindfulness, we are asking them, as I said, to change their relationships with their thoughts and their feelings by improving their metacognition. Um, and that's kind of um, compared with the active process of challenging their thoughts. So if people have negative thoughts around sleep, we wouldn't go in and ask them necessarily to analyze why they're having those thoughts or where they're coming from. Um, we may perhaps encourage them to simply um, choose to let them go. Second, mindfulness is about cultivating awareness and staying with whatever thoughts and sensations arise in the moment, whether these thoughts might be positive or negative. And that contrasts with what many people um, have an idea of, which is that we are trying to get them to mentally and physically relax so that they can get to sleep. We are not actually asking people to meditate themselves to sleep, and um, that's kind of a misconception a lot of people come into the program with. And finally, mindfulness-based therapies are process-oriented. So we're, they're about teaching people a set of skills and techniques, and we are not particularly oriented towards um, any particular outcome in a very goal-driven kind of a way. So one of the things that is taught quite early on in mindfulness classes are the attitudes of mindfulness. And trainees are often asked to bring these attitudes into their practice as well as into their daily lives. And these attitudes are here. Uh, you can see them, their beginner's mind, non-judgment, being patient with yourself, learning how to accept yourself, non-striving, trust, as well as letting go. And in mindfulness-based therapies for insomnia, we tend to spend a lot of time talking about how these attitudes can be applied to our negative sleep-related thoughts in order to um, change our relationship with those and help us to get better sleep. So the first set of, of attitudes I want to talk about are beginner's mind as well as trust. And I bundle these two attitudes together because I think um, they're about unlearning the old habits of the past, unlearning all those anxious and worrying habits and, and attitudes that people have Towards, um, towards sleep and bedtime. So beginner's mind really is about coming to new experiences without any preconceived notions or expectations of what they're going to be like. People with insomnia commonly would get into bed and think, oh my gosh, here we are, we're at another night, I'm really dreading this, it's going to be such a tough time getting to sleep again. Whereas beginner's mind, having an attitude of beginner's mind might encourage them to approach it as a fresh and a new experience, to look at it with curiosity and not have um, any preconceived notion of what that new night is going to be like. 
which brings us to trust. People with insomnia have often lost trust in their own bodies and minds to put them to sleep. And uh, teaching people mindfulness is the first step in the process of re-establishing that trust. It's a big leap of faith to ask people to take, but it's a leap that they do have to take in order to restore themselves to having good and healthy sleep. The second set of attitudes, I think, are more relevant for thoughts and feelings that you might have while you're actually lying in bed. And these are non-judgment, acceptance, as well as letting go. One of the common things I hear is that um, people with insomnia go to bed or try to go to bed and force themselves to sleep when they're not actually sleepy. They have a hard time accepting the fact that they're not sleepy and not ready for bed. And one thing we know from the literature on cognitive behavioral therapy is that spending time tossing and turning in bed is quite a bad idea. That we don't want to associate the bed with bad quality sleep, we need to associate it with the good and sound sleep um, that we should be getting. And so a better idea would be to accept the fact that you're not necessarily sleepy yet and get out of bed and go and do something else. Non-judgment. People with insomnia judge the state of being awake as being very negative. And so they're very hard on themselves when they lie in bed and uh, can't get to sleep. And rather than treat yourself so harshly, why not have um, compassion for yourself and realize that you know, it's, not, um, it's not really a bad thing necessarily to be awake. And finally, letting go. In particular, letting go of the idea that there's going to be this ideal or perfect sleep that we're going to achieve. So when I was writing this talk, um, I was reminded of a story that's often told to students of meditation, which is about a student and, and his teacher. And the student goes to the teacher one day and says, you know, I tried to meditate today, teacher, and I had such a tough time doing it. Like, my mind was all over the place, and I just felt all these aches and pains in my body, and it was, just, it was just a horrible experience. To which the teacher looked at the student and matter-of-factly said, you know, it will pass. So the next week, the student comes back to the teacher and says, you know, you were absolutely right. Um, it did pass. So I tried to meditate today, and I had a really great time. I was so focused. I felt this real sense of inner peace, and it was really, really wonderful. Uh, to which the teacher replied matter-of-factly, it will pass. <laughs> I think we would do well to bring this attitude um, into the bedroom as well, to realize that all of us healthy or poor sleepers have good nights and bad nights, and not to become so attached to the good nights and try to push away the bad nights, but to accept them both for what they are and let both realize that both of them are going to pass like clouds in the sky. And finally, to kind of bring me back full circle to my main theme, the ideas of patience and non-striving that striving for good sleep is very often counterproductive. That what we need to do is have patience with our own bodies and minds, especially if we already do um, suffer from insomnia and need that time to get back to restore ourselves to, to healthy sleep again. <laughs>